Yes! So I have the AMC A-List, and what that is is a subscription service wherein for $19.95 a month, I get three free movie tickets a week. And I really took advantage of it at first from December 2018 to March 2020. I saw a whopping 177 movies movie showings in 66 weeks, which, damn. But then the pandemic came around and screwed all of that up. Yeah. But now the theaters are back open. The dishes in the dishwasher are clean. Not anymore. Yeah, not anymore. The dishes in the dishwasher are clean. Okay. So now movie theaters are back open, and so am I. So get ready for some up to date movie not, reviews with Steve Subs of the Week. Dun, 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 dun. No, I got it all in last night. I was gonna, night. I was gonna play watch. myself off there for a sec. Uh, and this week represents my 16th week back in theaters. And in that time, I have seen 28 movies. This week, I only managed to see one movie in theaters, but there was another, there's another movie that I wanted to talk about uh, that has come out recently. I haven't seen it, but I just wanted to discuss it. So this week, I saw the following two movies in theater. I saw the following movie in theater. In theaters, I saw the new film Lamb. Yeah. And then uh, I wanted to talk about the new Halloween movie, Halloween Kills. Uh, so first, uh, let us discuss the movie that I did not see in theaters uh, yet. I'm seeing it next week, but I wanted to discuss it. Uh, 2021's Halloween Kills. Okay, so a lot of people are hating on me on Twitter right now. Who? And the reason for that is be- uh, a lot of people. A lot of people are hating me on Twitter right now, and the reason is because... Uh, there you go. Uh, so I, I saw this graphic online, and there it is right there. It is the... What is... What is the, uh, it's, it's okay. Oh, huh, okay. So this is the timeline of the Halloween movie franchise. Okay. I, fa- I found this online and it astounded me. So this led me to download all of the Halloween movies. Halloween, Halloween 2, Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers... Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers, Halloween H2O 20 Years Later, Halloween Resurrection. I didn't bother downloading the, uh, the, the stupid Rob Zombie ones because those don't count. And then I downloaded 2018's uh, Halloween movie. And I thought that I could have a marathon to prepare myself for going to see the new film, Halloween Kills. Uh... I I haven't read any reviews on it, and I haven't seen anything about the new Halloween film, but I'm just going to go ahead and assume that in the film, Jamie Lee Curtis dies. And I'm going to assume that because the... uh, So the first new film was called Halloween, and then this one is called Halloween Kills. That's the movie that just came out. And in that movie... Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, uh, Laurie Strode, and all of them, they're like, evil dies tonight. We're going to kill Michael Myers. And so it's called Halloween Kills. So some people are like, oh, is Michael Myers going to die in this? No, because this is the third movie, which is uh, apparently coming out next year, and that one's called Halloween Dies or Halloween Ends, and that's the third film in the trilogy. So Michael Myers can't die in this new film because they're going to be releasing the third one, I believe, next year. So someone dies. So I'm assuming that Jamie Lee Curtis's character dies again. 
because I think she died in Halloween H2O, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, this chart of the Halloween timeline, absolutely, I find it absolutely fascinating. So I was on Twitter, and someone uh, tweeted, uh, I've been thinking a lot about horror movie timelines. Which movie franchise is your favorite? And everyone's saying, oh, Friday the 13th. Oh, fucking <coughs> Nightmare on Elm Street. And I said, uh, if we're talking timelines, take a look at this. And I posted this image. Uh, that tweet has been seen 10,000 times, and everyone is telling me about how this chart is wrong, and I did a horrible job at it. And it's like, I just posted a picture I found on the internet that doesn't make me the Stephen King of the image. Yeah. So I'm so annoyed with all of these people like... Uh, uh, actually, this is tied into... Halloween 3 is actually tied into Halloween... Uh, uh, the Halloween franchise because of this one scene, uh, uh, this one uh, thing that happens on the radio, and also Halloween H2O isn't, in fact... And it's like, I don't care. Yeah. I, I don't have a pony in this race, you know? Yeah. I, 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 I don't... I don't care, but it's making me a bit annoyed with the Halloween franchise as a whole. I know it's not the Halloween franchise's fault. It's just people being douchebags. There's a, I like horror movies, but there are people out there who take horror movies so freaking seriously. Yeah, and, and, and I, don't, I don't get it. I mean, yeah, I, the fucking Halloween movies, you know, yeah. I... I so they're stupid. So fucking what? Yeah. You know, I, uh, my favorite franchise, which I, I feel I really must admit at this point, seeing as I just ran through the franchise again this week, Phantasm. Nice. Beats like, all of them. I like Phantasm. Uh, so, so, yeah, so I'm going to see this, uh, the new Halloween movie, Tomorrow, so Tall my wife is would make Michael Myers his bitch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No I love doubt. that old guy. I love that old guy. Post Hell of day. Fucking Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm a bit annoyed with the Halloween franchise and <coughs> horror movie fanboys, but uh, yeah, I'm going to go see that tomorrow. Should be fine. Uh, and finally, the Steve Stubbs pick of the week is the one movie that I saw in theaters this week because my wife was gone until late Thursday. My wife was in upstate New York, and so I wasn't able to see the amount of movies that I normally go see. But I was able yesterday to I, I traveled 45, 50 minutes to a theater in Oklahoma, the outskirts of Oklahoma City to go see. The new A24 film, Lamb! Oh, man. Okay, so... Okay. This is a... Uh, bizarre art horror film. It's... The credits are, in the beginning, the opening credits in the beginning are really big because this was made by various uh, company, production companies and studios in Iceland and Sweden and Poland. Uh, and it, it's, it's all in Icelandic, so it is a foreign film. But in the beginning, you forget that because I swear to God, in the first 30 minutes of the movie... I don't think there's 30 lines Yeah. in the first 30 minutes. I don't think there's any dialogue in the first 10 minutes. I'd say maybe there's 20 lines in the first 35 minutes of the film. Uh, it's bizarre and haunting, and there are parts that are funny. There are parts that honestly did... Uh, it, it's not scary, but it's, it's very unsettling. There were some parts in the film where I was just sort of, <gasps> you know, like that. It, it, it's, 
it's a very creepy movie. Uh, basic plot, an Icelandic couple who has a farm in the middle of nowhere. Uh, they have a bunch of sheep, and one of the sheep uh, gives birth to a half-human, half-sheep thing. And they decide, and the, the couple's relationship is already strained. They hardly talk to each other. There's not a lot of love there. And suddenly they have this half human, half lamb baby. It, there's like one human arm and human legs and a bit of a human body, but then there's one hoof and a sheep head. And it can't talk, but it can walk and do things. And, and it, so they raise the lamb as their own. And. It's it's really creepy and bizarre, and the ending it it just sort of ends. But it 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 has big Midsommar vibes, big The Lighthouse vibes. This entire movie it came out. It was released in North America by A twenty four because of course it did because this movie has A twenty four written all over it. They also did The Lighthouse, yeah, and. Midsommar and Uncut Gems. And so this film is absolutely... Well, I, I, to me, it kind of seems like there's there's A24, which is kind of like the old Miramax. Yeah. Putting out your classier kind of movie. They're just doing it more of in a horror genre. Yeah. Where then right under it is like Blumhouse. Yeah. And Blumhouse is more like Dark Castle films. Remember Dark Castle? They were putting out all remakes of William Castle movies. Yeah. They're kind of more in there. They're doing more popish horror, not as not as highbrow. Yeah, this... Uh, it's episode it, it, 420, and I've been smoking this whole time, dude. Nice. <laughs> uh, and then the movie stars... Uh, Numi Rapace? R- Rapace? She was the woman who starred in the, the all of the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo movies, the, the ones that came out in... the Swedish ones. Yeah. And she was also in Prometheus. I think she was. She was in Prometheus. She was the one that gave herself a like a an abortion, an alien abortion. But the movie is creepy and bizarre, and uh, it. I I went to go see it on opening weekend, and there was only one other person in the theater. So this isn't a this isn't a widely released film. I had to drive almost an hour to find a theater that was playing it. And this movie is going to disappear like that, you know? Because yeah. this isn't a film that an Icelandic film about a human sheep hybrid isn't exactly causing a lot of people <coughs> to uh, rush to the cinemas. But I absolutely loved it, and and it was just bizarre, and it it was beautifully shot, and uh, it was haunting. It's one of those films, like when I first saw Midsommar, I'm like, oh my god, that movie was creepy, and then and then like you're still thinking about it two days later, four days later, a week later, you're like, shit. You know, it, it, it's a film that haunts you, and I really loved it, and it was incredible. And it, I think I went like this when the movie ended, like a, what? So, really incredible, and you should, all, everyone should try and see it before it disappears. Lamb. I- incredible, wonderful movie. There's so little dialogue that when they do finally talk, I, I kept going... Oh shit, this is a foreign movie. I need to be reading what they're saying because that's how little dialogue there is in this. But wow, just a, a, a hauntingly bizarre film. 
a bizarre ending really, really sticks to you, this film. Lamb. Everyone should rush and see it before it disappears in theaters. So that's my uh, Steve Stubbs pick of the week. The foreign movie Lamb. Everyone should go see it. It's bizarre. Uh, next week, I'm going to go see Halloween Kills. I really don't want to see the new James Bond movie. I haven't seen yeah. any of the James Bond movies. But what else am I going to see? I don't want to have to drive an hour to go see Lamb again. But if I have to, I will. Uh, but I'm definitely going to see the new Halloween movie. Uh, what else? I'll figure it out. Uh, AMC has been doing this thing lately where uh, I think it's every Wednesday and Friday. Okay. But uh, you pay $5 and you go to an AMC theater and they will show a horror movie. But the, the interesting thing is they don't tell you what the movie is. Okay. It might be a fairly new horror movie. <coughs> it might be a classic horror movie. You pay five dollars, and you might get um, Get Out, or you might get Malignant, or you might get The Shining. You yeah. you don't fucking know, and I think that's really interesting. And if possible, I might go and see one of those too, because because that sort of shit's right up my alley. <coughs> you know, like movie roulette. That's, that's really, really cool. They play Jordan Peele's Us uh, this week, this past week. I think the last time that they did this, uh, I think last Saturday. That's what me. I'm going to have to watch again. I have to watch both of his again. They both demand more attention. I really like Us. I feel that there's a lot there that is uh, hiding under the surface. You see the movie yeah. and you go, oh, Us, this was a good movie, but, but there's... <laughs> There's so much more to it if you really, hiding under the surface that you really got to think about. Plus, there's the fact that a large portion of the movie happens at the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk, which I've been to a shit ton of times. And it's just really cool to have a horror movie set in a place I've been, you know? It's not in some cabin in the woods somewhere or at some summer camp or some shit like that. No, it's at a place I know. It's like if they made a horror movie inside Metro Center Mall in Phoenix. It's really neat. But, uh, so yeah. So, th- so join <coughs> us next week for some more up-to-date movie reviews with Steve Stubbs of the Week. And cut on that.